Welcome to the 13 on your side version of the NFL draft previews. We're getting ready to talk about all things NFL draft. We got a lot of Lions things to get to, a lot of quarterback breakdowns to talk about. We'll even hit some offensive line talk because there's some local shine in the NFL draft coming up. And of course, Mozzie Smith, the big guy, well, where will he go? We'll start off the top. We look at the top of the draft. The number one position that everybody thinks the most about when it comes to the NFL draft is quarterbacks. You can turn your franchise around if you select the quarterbacks, the right quarterback, something I know the Bears struggle with, something the Lions have struggled with. Seemingly everybody except the Indiana Col Indianapolis Colts, actually. But we'll start with the quarterback talk because I think out of the top six picks in the draft, you'll see at least three quarterbacks taken. You know, I know the, the Texans have been rumored to be interested in quarterbacks. Obviously, the Carolina Panthers traded up to number one because they want a quarterback. So when you look at the top of this draft, why is it so quarterback heavy or who do you think the top quarterback will be? Well, you know, you look at it, I think Bryce Young is the obvious name, you know, had a lot of success. C.J. Stroud, a lot of success. And then you got two guys like Will Levis and Anthony Richardson who, you know, maybe they didn't have the success that you would hope for at the college level, but there are people there who, you know, this is their entire job is to analyze every little thing about these guys coming out of college and say, okay, this guy's got great arm strength. This guy's got great athleticism. There's, you know, you'll hear words about intangibles. So, you know, Anthony Richardson and Will Levis have worked their way into that conversation kind of through those outlets, whereas CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, those are your sort of proven assets at this point. But you look at these quarterbacks, none of them are, to borrow a phrase, a sure thing, can't miss prospect. I mean, as great as Bryce Young was, short, no small guy. You know, C.J. Stroud comes from a program in Ohio State that hasn't really produced a great quarterback, so you wonder how much of that is system versus player. Will Levis as you know, underwhelmed at, at you know, uh, Kentucky. And then, of course, there's Anthony Richardson, who I think is going to get somebody fired if they draft this guy in the top five because this guy is a project through and through. All the intangibles that Matt talked about, but none of the production because he hasn't played much. So ultimately, I mean, who of these signal callers seems to be the best? I think it's clearly Bryce Young. He won a Heisman. He's won at Alabama, won there for a long time. Maybe he didn't win the national championship, but he was in the big game. C.J. Stroud, I think he's number two. And I got to go Will Levis three just because I think he's – and I know it's hard to just rate all these guys in the underwear Olympics when they're just not in pads, when they're not playing 11-on-11. <laughs> 11 11, but he just really stands out to me. I saw a play today of him where he threw flat-footed 50 yards on a dime, and it's just like, wow, like – He's a big guy, too. Anthony Richardson, again, like you said, a project. With all these guys, they're always question marks, but I feel like Bryce Young has the least amount of questions, even though he's the smaller of the bunch. I think that's what raises the questions. You're right about collegiate production. No one's taking that away from Bryce Young. The dude lit it up at Alabama. You mentioned winning a Heisman. But we can talk about Troy Smith. We can talk about Eric Crouch. The, the game is littered with collegiate quarterbacks that won Heisman's, but that doesn't translate to the NFL, right? You know, well, yes. That, that, it doesn't always translate to the NFL, but then you look at guys like Drew Brees, who was awesome, won a Super Bowl. I don't think he ever won an MVP, but he was a really good quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game of football, and he wasn't the biggest guy out there. So it doesn't really matter uh, the size. I think it's more of a heart over height type of deal, and uh, it comes down to the brains, and I think – Bryce Young, he's, he's been the best quarterback in college football the last two years, I would say. So I would, I would take him uh, number one overall. And I think that's where the Panthers are leaning. And it, to me, it's what if, I've read some reports. It sounds like the Texans are, they want Bryce Young so badly and they don't want anybody else that they're not willing to go quarter. They're not, uh, they're, they don't have to go quarterback at two. And they could take Will Anderson, could take Tyree Wilson, the guy out of Texas Tech. So we'll see what happens. But I think the consensus from what I've seen, Bryce Young is the top guy. Hard over height, uh, old school saying. First time I heard it was Khalil Pimpleton, you know, won 13 on your sidelines MVP. And he used to say hard over height. And he definitely proved that at CMU, proved it at Virginia Tech, proved it with the Lions. And, you know, he's in the NFL camp. I'm, I believe he'll have a shot with the Giants, I think, as a yes as a guy but you know when you look at these quarterbacks Matt I know you're a Colts guy your team has long been rumored to, to go after quarterbacks is there a trait that you want out of these quarterbacks that you think one might have over the other or do you just think ah it's a, it's a crapshoot either way well you know the Colts have some problems with their offensive line of course you've got Quentin Nelson and and he's wonderful but but there's some there's some question marks with the rest of it their uh, wide receiver core aside from Michael Pittman is not complete so when I look at those two problems, I'm looking at a mobile guy. So you might look at an Anthony Richardson who, you know, you're talking about, oh, 
could get somebody fired. You know, any of these picks could get somebody fired. And I, I think just as a cautionary note to fans, you know, uh, in the last 10 years, 19 quarterbacks have been taken in the top 10 picks. And out of those, I think nine of them are still starters. A few of them are kind fringe. of in that fringe where, you know, maybe an injury set them back and, and they're hoping to, to work, you know, uh, yeah, exactly, the Trey Lance types. And then you've got guys like Blake Bortles who have retired and uh, Josh Rosen, who's a free agent with no, um, no clear sight back to the league. So, you know, you're looking at about a 50% success rate. And I think, you know, we all get excited about the quarterbacks. It's the most important position on the field. It's also the most hyped position on the field for that reason. So if you are like me, a, a fan with a top 10 pick, I would just give a cautionary note that, you know, it's okay to get excited about your number one pick, but don't put all the hopes of the franchise on that one guy and hold, you know, if you're the type to, uh, you know, talk to your management on social media, hold their feet to the fire, say, hey, you know, we got this, we got this guy now uh, who has a lot of promise, but get him some weapons. Don't leave him out there strung out or else you might end up like uh, the next Sam Darnold or the next Zach Wilson, where it's just like, hey, this guy didn't pan out and, uh, you know, it's not necessarily their fault. They didn't get the weapons around them that they needed to Matt, succeed. I have one question for you, though. What do you feel about quarterbacks that they eat their banana peels <laughs> and they drink mayonnaise or I, they drink coffee with mayonnaise, with mayonnaise, in, mayonnaise it. in it? It's so weird. I don't want the Colts to draft Will Levis <laughs> for a lot of reasons, but uh, amongst the top is because he eats banana peels and puts mayonnaise in his coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. I, of the two, though, I have less of a problem with the mayonnaise and the coffee. I am absolutely repulsed by the thought of putting, like, eating banana peels. Uh, I saw him take a bite of a banana <laughs> with the peel on, and I'm just like, what are you doing, Come dude? on, man. But, hey, if he wins oh, football games, Oh, Andy went to Kentucky, and Kentucky is a, a mortal enemy of the state of Indiana. So okay. I think Will Levis is probably going to be the best of this bunch. I base this solely off of skill set not off of what, who did what in college, what program they were at. I think he's got the arm, which you alluded to, making flat-footed throws. You can coach certain things. You can't coach arm talent. You know, you can't coach durability. You can't coach size. So again, some of these knocks on some of these other guys, I don't think Will Levis has. So if the only knock on him is, well, he didn't win enough in Kentucky, nobody wins at Kentucky, so that's okay. For me, anyway. I think, the, like I said, some of these quarterbacks are gonna go, but Anthony Richardson reminds me a lot of Malik Willis, who came out of nowhere, was drafted out of Liberty last year, and a lot of guys were saying, okay, this could be the guy. The little football that he did play last year didn't look great because he's another project that's going to take a couple of years. So the reason I say avoid these projects and they'll get someone fired is if you take a guy that's going to take two or three years to develop, by the time he's in that third or fourth year, you got to go. And if he's not ready, then you've wasted four years of a first-round pick. It's just a risk I don't think some teams need to take the Colts being one of them because I know they're rumored for a quarterback. We talked about the Texans. We talked about the Panthers. You know, the team that I think is kind of in that top five mix that doesn't really need a quarterback and they can throw a wrench in the Lions' plans, the Arizona Cardinals. You know, uh, I, I think Mark mentioned, you know, the, the, ty the, excuse me, the defensive end, you know, Tyree or, you know. Tyree Wilson. Tyree Wilson obviously mentioned Will Anderson from Alabama, who I think is the best player in the draft, and any team in the top six will be lucky to land Will Anderson. Jalen Carter is another guy on talent alone, one of the best three prospects in the draft, but has off-field issues. So what the Arizona Cardinals do, in my opinion, impacts what a lot happens behind them, specifically with the Lions, who I think really want to go on the defensive line. I think you have to go defensive line, or at least defense. I've seen the Lions rumored to be taking the, the cornerback out of Oregon, the cornerback out of Illinois, uh, Christian Gonzalez and Devin Witherspoon, respectively. Um, so we'll see what happens. And I get what you said about the Cardinals, but I also think, like I mentioned earlier, the Texans. If they decide they want Bryce Young and that's the only guy they want, and if he goes number one, are they going to screw up all the plans for the Lions and take Will Anderson, Jalen Carter at two? I think that's a big question. You think about the 2006 NFL draft is when I first started watching the NFL. Everyone thought Reggie Bush, that's the number one guy in the draft. And who did the Texans take? 
Mario Williams. Mario Williams. And Reggie Bush, Bush went too. Vince Young was in that draft. Matt Leinert was in that draft. So it's like the Texans needed a quarterback. David Carr wasn't getting it done. So granted, that was 17 years ago. <laughs> so obviously it's a completely different a regime and everything. But you never know when it comes to the draft. That's basically my point here. But I think, yeah, we've got to watch out for the Texans. I'm assuming they're going to take a quarterback. They really have to because when are you going to get another chance to get this these franchise quarterback. A franchise quarterback. And, yeah, and I think the Cardinals could mess it up. But I think there's an opportunity, and i got to ask you this as a Lions fan. If, the, if it makes sense, would you trade up to go get a guy like Will Anderson, to get a guy like Jalen Carter at three? To if go, I, so if, that, if so I'm nothing Lions, else gets screwed up. If I'm the Lions, I can pair 18 with maybe the first of their two second-round picks because the Lions are fortunate in that regard. I might pair 18 with a second-round pick, move up to three, to get Will Anderson, if I'm convinced that he might not be there later. And I know a lot of people want Bajon Robinson at 18, or you can get a wide receiver at 18 now that Jamison Williams is suspended. And they like that the Lions have two picks in the first round. I do too. But like you, know, like you just said, Mark, if that guy that you want, be it Jalen Carter, be it Will Anderson, is sitting there at three, and you don't know what the Cardinals are going to do, I think it's very willing, or it's very worth it for the Lions rather to trade up. And I wouldn't be upset with that if you walk away with what most people consider to be the best player, especially the best non-quarterback in the draft, because it's all about the trenches and what happens on the defensive and offensive lines, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. And I got to ask you, Matt, uh, I'm not sure how well-versed you are to just Jalen Carter news, but for a guy who has off-the-field issues, even though the, the ceiling is so high, does that scare you off at all if you're a team that's drafting in the top five with a, that kind of level of production? Because everyone I've heard, you say Will Anderson, everything that I've read says that Jalen Carter is by far the best talent in the draft, and he's slipping because of the uh, the race. Over, overweight at the combine, yep. has the racing incident at Georgia where he was involved in this accident that killed a teammate and a staffer. So that's already been settled in the in the court of law, and he's under probation right now. But he's got these two massive off-field red flags. You know, does that factor? Well, you know, I I, I think in that case you're talking about a pretty serious thing, um, and you're also talking about a. a a young man who is at the age, um, not that it is, is excusable, but a lot of kids make dumb decisions at that age. So you're, you're looking at a, at a guy and you look at him and you say, hey, does this kid have a chance to, to do a little growing up? How, how has he progressed since that incident happened? And if you talk to him, uh, if you're doing these interviews and you talk to him and you, you decide, hey, um, you know, he, he's made a lot of progress. He knows he's made some mistakes in life and he's, he's willing to take the steps he needs to, to redeem himself and, you know, kind of put that behind him and, and be a, a great player on and off the field. Maybe you take a shot at, at a guy like that, but there's always the question mark, right? True, true. You never really know. Um, one of the top positions in the draft, usually year in and year out, you see quarterbacks go high. You also see offensive tackles taken pretty high. Nine times out of ten, there'll be a top five pick that sneaks, that sneaks in an offensive tackle. Definitely in the top ten. I know the Chicago Bears have been rumored for months to be interested in a wide variety of different players. There's been Paris Johnson out of Ohio State. There's been the big guy out of Northwestern who can play tackle and guard. So when you look at the offensive line in this draft, there might not be these elite prospects in years before that go in the first three picks. But Mark, if you're the Bears and you're sitting there at nine and you know this team needs everything, which is why they traded down to accumulate more picks, is it just smart to grab the offensive lineman? I think it's just smart to see what's available, and if, if there's a great offer to even trade back again, you, you take the offer because there's so many holes on the Bears team. But like you said, I think it's a really good offensive line class. You mentioned Paris Johnson, who was great at Ohio State. Uh, Peter Skronsky at Northwestern, uh, he had to step in as a true freshman to play left tackle in the Big Ten, and he was phenomenal. The big knock on him right now is his arms aren't long enough, but he was really good in the, the Big Ten for a few years, so I don't. he's never really had that question asked until dr the draft process started. So I think the Bears would be fine taking any of those guys. I think they'd be fine. I think really anything. I, I, the big question for me, too, I've seen a lot of rumors of the Bears taking B. John Robinson, too. And I think what we mentioned earlier, Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, the two top talents in the draft, I think B. John's right there at three. And if you take a risk on a guy like Bijan at nine. I know you're not never supposed to take running backs in the top 10, but if he's a generational running back, like an Adrian Peterson, like a 
Uh, get someone like that, like Todd Gurley, for a few years where he's great, oh, I think it'd be awesome to have. And I think it's the, the problem with running backs, though, it's more of a luxury than a need in, in the NFL. Like you can see, like Deontay Foreman, uh, who ran all over the Lions in like week 15, <laughs> week 16. He was awesome, and he was a third-round guy. He's been bouncing around from teams for the last few years, and he, he was been great. Um, so I think you can find talent at the running back anywhere, but if you, if you, have the, if you want to have the luxury, I think it's a nice kind of pick to have. Two things about that, because you're not wrong. Matt, you can help me out with this, because I can't remember the number. Jonathan Taylor was, without question, one of the best, if not the best running backs in college football at Wisconsin. Unbelievable career. Where was he taken in the draft? Oh, boy. Uh, Second round. Se yeah, second, yeah so, you're right. So uh, unbelievable talent that most would say is he checked all the boxes, second round pick. If I'm an NFL team, yes, you mentioned Adrian Peterson, who, was had a, who had a phenomenally lengthy career and avoided injuries. He had a lot of collarbone is issues at Oklahoma, and people wondered if he could stand up the dur you know, durability. He went in a, in a draft where the Raiders took Jamarcus Russell first overall, which was a mistake. The Lions took uh, Calvin Johnson at two, which was, you know, thank goodness for the Raiders. Uh, <laughs> but then Adrian Peterson slid to seven, and people were saying the same thing. You don't draft the guy in the first round, but he was a phenomenal guy. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. The Todd Gurley thing is, yeah, for three or four years, Todd Gurley's the best running back in the game, but then what? So you're spending the first round pick on a guy who's going to have a four or five year career for you, and it could potentially not just be off your team, but out of football. Guys like Le'Veon Bell, like all these guys who are in, immensely talented, but that position wears down faster than any other in the league. And because of that, I'm not sure I want to take a first round guy when I can get Jonathan Taylor in the second round. Kind of seems like if you're going to bet on a running back, you want to have a team that's ready to win now. Yeah, I agree you know, with that. You're, you're not looking at, uh, at, at spending a top 10 pick on, on a running back who, like you said, is only going to last four or five years, probably, you could get uh, an offensive lineman who's going to last 15 years. You could get a quarterback who's going to last 20 years. Um, so, yeah, if you are somebody who is in a position to take a running back, you're probably a team that's got the other ingredients in place that it needs to win. Sounds like the Lions, which means they're taking Bijan Robinson at number six. Breaking news. Matt just broke that down. That's what the Lions are going to do. My final question for you guys is we were talking about the offensive line a little bit. Definitely some local flavor in this one. Offensive tackles are always the sexy pick. Guards and centers are the ones that make the offensive line go, but even still, they usually fall down later in the draft. There's a local guy out of LSU, Anthony Bradford from Muskegon. We covered him in high school, and he was a big, big guy. Went to that winning program with the Tigers, won a national championship. I have no idea where he's going to go in the draft, Matt, but he's excited to see a local guy that you know is going to have his name called. Kind of seems like a, uh, a, a middle of the draft kind of guy, maybe a third rounder. Um, that's what I've heard. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You're talking about a guy who has blocked for some of the greatest uh, offensive playmakers in Michigan high school football history. You're talking about Khalil Pimpleton. You're talking about Ladarius Jefferson. You're talking about Cam Martinez. He goes on to block for Joe Burrow. Now, granted, he didn't play a whole lot his freshman year, but he did get some playing time. Still gets a ring. Yeah, absolutely. You still get the ring. Um, I had the pleasure of going over to his mom's place to watch the national championship that year with their family. You know, his, his mom said, this is a great kid. He's a gentle giant. He's very family oriented. So, you know, I, I think whoever ends up getting Anthony Bradford is, is going to get a, a nice, um, the, the kind of guy you would want on your organization, the kind of guy you would want representing your organization and protecting your quarterback. And the biggest local pick of the draft is going to be Mozzie Smith, the East Kentwood grad, the Grand Rapids native, went to the University of Michigan, was a, a three-year player, two-year starter for sure, was a senior captain, one of the best nose tackles in the country. He's going to be either a late first round pick or a early second round pick, in my opinion. Mozzie's not making it past Friday. It's got to be pretty exciting for those around this area to see Mozzie Smith hear his name called early, Mark. Oh, yeah. Mozzie, I mean, what a phenomenal career he had at Michigan. Uh, the, well, the big stat that I love to throw out is not really a stat, but it's uh, the, the Athletic has an article every single year where they name the biggest freaks in physical uh, in college football. And Mozzie Smith was number one. The guy who's he's over 300 pounds and he can jump uh, like 
over the moon, it seems yeah, like. He's bench unbelievable. Press cars he, he had the most bench presses at the NFL Combine. He's a strong guy. He was always double teamed this past year while the stats might have not have been there. But, I mean, if you're watching the film, you know that he's just taken up two guys at the time. That's why Michigan's defense was so dominant uh, this year. So, yes, to see another local guy drafted that high would be really cool. And, uh, again, I know he's gotten, he's had to deal with the off-the-field issues, but I think that's been squashed. And it's really going to be exciting where he's going to go. I think I was reading something earlier today, and it looks like the Buffalo Bills could target him in the first round, which would be, I mean, really cool to play for a, a team that could, could possibly win the Super Bowl uh, in a few years. So, uh, Mozzie Smith, uh, we're excited to see where he goes. Pack your long johns if you're going to Buffalo, Mozzie. It gets a little cold up there. But, uh, you know, all those local high school players here in West Michigan, all of you playing the OK Conference in the West Michigan Conference all over our viewing area, look at Mozzie Smith, look at Anthony Bradford. They're going to get drafted. You can, too, obviously. Put your mind to it. Put a little bit of work in this offseason, get a little bit better. We'll see you in the NFL Draft in a few years. That's going to wrap up our NFL Draft preview. We'll see what the Lions do in the first round, whether or not they hold on to both of those first-round picks. We see if the Colts actually do draft the quarterback, and we'll keep our eyes peeled for Anthony Bradford and, of course, Mozzie Smith.